Today I'm going to conclude my discussion of the great poet Alexander Pushkin and his masterpiece called Eugene Onegin. Now, Pushkin is the kind of national poet or literary figure of Russia. He has the same position in Russian literature that, say, Shakespeare has, for example, in England, or that um, Goethe has in Germany, or um, Dante in Italy. And um, it's partly because Pushkin came early, but it's partly because he did so much. And um, he lived a very colorful life. He died at a very young age, 37, killed in a duel. And um, he was uh, at both at the same time a genius, but he was at the same time a kind of wastrel. By that I mean he was a gambler, and he was a drinker, and he was a womanizer, and, and he was reckless in all kinds of ways. In fact, uh, in, on more than one occasion, he was close to uh, getting involved in a duel, and eventually he did, and uh, it killed him. When he was gambling, he would sometimes run out of money completely, and uh, then they would say, you got to put something on the table. And he'd be like, well, I've, I've got my latest chapter of Eugene Onegin. And they're like, okay, put that on the table. And, and literally, he would lose his own chapter of his own poem. And then uh, later, he would then borrow money and like buy it back. So this is a, um, this is a crazy Russian. Now, I talked a little bit about the, um, the romance, or if you can use that term, between Onegin, uh, Onegin, and Tatiana. And that's the beginning and end of the story. But amazingly, there is a kind of middle plot that I want to focus on in completing my discussion of this work. And the middle plot involves the friendship between Onegin, who is a man of the world, a cosmopolitan, a cynic, not an entirely good guy by any means, and a young poet named Lenski. Now, this poet, Lenski, is a pure product of romanticism. You can almost see him as a kind of early Byronic figure. And in fact, this is a guy who studies in Göttingen, where um, Göttingen in Germany, and um, Pushkin describes him as a young, uh, fiery-eyed Russian with long curls, as was the style of the day. And interestingly, these two very different characters, Lenski and Onegin, Onegin become close friends. And um, Onegin is a little older, and he sort of takes a cynical view of Lenski. Lenski actually falls head, in, head over heels in love with this young woman named Olga. And in fact, he brings all his romantic afflatus to this relationship. Uh, he's a man who wants to be in love, and his sort of his passions have descended on this young woman, Olga. And he's fanatical about her. And of course, Onegin is kind of uh, like, well, I mean, geez, doesn't this guy realize love is an illusion? He takes this kind of sophisticated view, but he's like, but let him have it. It's 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 an illusion that you know the young are entitled to. So he's indulgent toward his young friend, uh, Lenski. Well, Lenski invites uh, Onegin to what's called a name day celebration. In those days, the Russians in the countryside would celebrate the, um, the saint that you're named after. So if you're named after Peter, then St. Peter would be your name day. You celebrate St. Peter's Saint's Day as the name day celebration. So there's a name day celebration going on. And it's a very rustic, almost you would call it like a sort of an agricultural fair. And even though Onegin's reluctant to go, he does go with Lenski, his friend. But when he's there, he becomes extremely annoyed because here he is, this cosmopolitan kind of city character. And he's in among these bumpkins. And he begins to, he's like, they've got nothing to say to me. I've got nothing to say to them. And then some of the bumpkins spot him and they realize he's kind of a misfit. So they start making fun of Onegin and he overhears them and he becomes extremely extremely angry, and he blames his friend Lenski. And so he goes, I I'm going to teach uh, Lenski a lesson. You here begin to see the kind of darker side of Onegin come out. He goes, you know what? I'm going to teach him a lesson he's not going to forget. And the way he does it, which is very bad, is when the dancing begins, in those days you'd, you'd have a dance card in which you would sign up sort of to dance with someone. Onegin signs up to dance all the dances of the whole evening with Olga, everyone. 
And so there they are dancing away and chatting away. And of course, Onyegin is getting kind of deliberately flirty. He's not genuinely flirting with her, but he's making a show of flirting with her. And of course, here is Lensky sitting by the side, kind of sulking. And finally, Lensky goes up to Olga and says, can, can I have a dance? And she goes, oh, no, you can't because I'm all signed up with Onyegin. And of course, Olga's innocent in the matter, but Lensky is furious at his friend. He sort of loses it and he goes up to Onyegin, starts screaming at him and, and so on. And Onyegin is like, don't make a scene, you know, kind of let's discuss this later and so on. But Lensky is out of control. He's a creature of passion and he's outraged and his feelings are hurt. And so he lets Onyegin have it. And at the end of it, and this is, of course, the point at which things become sort of dangerous, he throws down the glove and challenges Onyegin to a duel. Now, Onyegin, at this point, he's smart enough to realize, oh my gosh, I, this is ridiculous. He's like, he says to himself, hey, Onyegin, you know, you're a man of the world. How could you get yourself in such a ridiculous situation? You are being challenged to a duel by your own best friend. You had no intention of getting into a fight, let alone a fight to the end. And yet, he, so Onyegin realizes that he's done something utterly unforgivable. And yet, in the code of honor of the day, what do you do? You can't refuse a duel. So Onyegin sort of summons up his outrage and goes, I'll teach you a lesson, you young punk, and so on. And Lenski is like, no, I'll teach you a lesson. And so the duel is on. It's on. Well, the next morning, uh, Lenski is up at dawn, gets up at six in the morning. And in fact, he goes, he goes, let's go, we're late. Onyegin will not want to wait. So Lenski is like, he, he, he's, he wants to be on time. He wants to get it over with. He wants to teach Onyegin a lesson. But where's Onyegin? He's fast asleep. He doesn't take the whole thing seriously. He, he sleeps for hours while Lenski is waiting. And while Lenski is waiting, he uh, utters a beautiful poem a poem that has been sort of immortalized not only in Pushkin but in Tchaikovsky uh, and Tchaikovsky's opera about Eugene Onyegin. And in Tchaikovsky's words, one of the most famous arias in Russian opera, uh, you have Lenski go, where, oh, where are the golden days of our youth? And essentially, uh, Lenski is saying, look, this might be my last day. And if it's my last day, uh, then will Olga, the woman he loves, whom he calls her husband, uh, whom he calls... Uh, he says he is her husband. He says, will she even remember me when I'm in my, if, I, if and when I'm in my grave? So uh, beautifully rendered by Tchaikovsky, very famous in Russia, famous in the Pushkin passage as well. And, um, but eventually Pushkin shows up, uh, the duel is on, and well, what do you know, Onyegin shoots Lenski dead. And of course, the moment he does that, he is absolutely horrified. He's killed his own best friend. And I think what's particularly powerful here is that, and I don't even know if this is really intentional, I don't think it is, but if you really think about what's going on here is that if you think about Lenski the poet, think about it, you have a poet, Pushkin, writing about a poet, Lenski. So obviously that's a part of Pushkin. Pushkin will have identified with the poet in Lenski. Why? Because that's the poetic side of Pushkin. Well, what's the other side of Pushkin? Well, it's the Onyegin side. It's the gambler, it's the wastrel, uh, it's the adulterer, it's the jackass, it's the jerk. And Pushkin was really all of those things. So here you have almost a beautiful metaphor for how, just as in Eugene Onyegin in the story, um, Lenski is shot dead by um, Onyegin this is also what happened to Pushkin. In other words, one could say that at the end of his life, and it was a short life, in his late 30s, the Onyegin part of Pushkin assassinated the Lenski part of Pushkin. Basically what happened is that Pushkin was having his way with all these men's wives. And finally, one guy, this was actually a French emigre officer, decided, well, two people can play at this game. So he began to sort of court Pushkin's wife. Well, what does Pushkin do? Challenges him to a duel. And Pushkin shoots, hits the guy, but hits him. The guy's wearing a military uniform and it hits him in the, on the button of the uniform, injuring the other guy, but not killing him. The other guy fires at Pushkin, doesn't kill him immediately, but seriously wounds him. Pushkin is taken to a hospital where he, he lives for several days, but ultimately they're unable to restore him and Pushkin dies in a, in a hospital bed. So here we have uh, in a way, again, that I'm not sure Pushkin fully intended, a almost precursor in Eugene Onyegin 
of the tragic end of Russia's greatest poet, Alexander Pushkin.